And guys, I just love y'all so much. And I love this ministry. You know, uh, for those who are seniors, you guys were in sixth grade when I first started here, which is just so weird to think about. And guys, we have seen people in this ministry find freedom in Christ. This has been a place where everyone is welcome. We've had people say that this is their safe place. We've had people that have opened up about dealing with all kinds of issues. And, and people have seen freedom in Christ in this ministry. And that is just so, so exciting to me. And I was listening to the songs and the lyrics that we were just singing, you know, about you know, breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. And guys, I just have a feeling about that. I was talking with David Clippert Rowe, our executive pastor here, and we were just having a conversation. And I was just like, you know, I just have such a good feeling about this year. I don't know what it is, but I am believing strongly that this year in this ministry is a year for breakthrough for so many of you guys, that this would be a year of liberation, a year of freedom, and that by faith that we're gonna see the miraculous break out in this place in your life, here in CF Students, in your own relationship with God. And I am so excited to see what God does in our church body this year. And tonight, we want to cast the vision for what we're doing. So we're not gonna have a regular sermon. We're gonna talk about and cast the vision for what to expect from this year. But in order to do that, I want to ensure that we have the best year ever. And so what we're going to do is we're going to lay some expectations. We're gonna lay some ground rules for all of our students and so after we do that, then we're gonna talk about our mission, our vision, and what to expect from the year. But we know that we have to have some expectations, some order, uh, some rules to follow, so to speak, so that we can all have a great year. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over our expectation of students. You could call these the 10 commandments uh, for CF students, and we're gonna put them up on the screen for you guys to follow along, so that way we're all crystal clear about what is expected of us this year. So let's strap in and let's get down to this so we can, uh, and then we'll get to some more fun stuff in a moment. Okay, our first expectation of our students is that you respect your leaders. Respect your leaders. This means whether it's a leader that's a staff person, like me, Cody, or Stephanie, whether it's a leader like your small group leaders, whether it is one of our safety team people or the police officer who's here on Wednesday nights. If there's a leader that asks you to do something or not do something, you obey what they say. So when we go through these, I'm gonna say, does everyone understand? And then I want all of you guys to respond with, Yes, sir. So let's practice. Does everyone understand? Yes, sir. Excellent. Respect your leaders. Number two, respect other students slash don't be a distraction to others. So what this means is that if you are being a distraction to other students, maybe you are you know, shoving your phone in someone's face and getting them to stop paying attention when they're trying to listen, or maybe it is you're talking really loudly and it's, and it's disrupting everything, or it's any kind of disorderly conduct, uh, we will step in and talk to you. And the three strikes you're out rule applies to this. So if we ask you to stop talking or stop being a distraction or whatever it is, listen to the first rule, listen to your leaders, respect your leaders. Uh, if we have to get to strike three, that means, okay, we can have a conversation with your parents about this and how you're being a distraction. So now the other thing with respecting students is not just respecting the students that are trying to pay attention and be here, but it's also having appropriate boundaries, right? So uh, if there is any inappropriate remarks, if there's any uh, sexual remarks that's made at somebody, or you are sharing anything type of inappropriate content at church, or uh, whether this is digitally or in person, I don't care. It's not three strikes, you're out. It's one strike, you're out. Does everybody understand? Excellent. Number three, no leaving church to go to a different location. And we know that there are some students that try to do this a lot. So your parents brought you here for a reason. They want you to be here at church. And while you are here, you are under our care. 
and we are responsible for you. And so what that means is if you're here until 8.30 when small groups are over, you're not leaving to go eat at Culver's or to walk over to 7-Eleven or whatever it is. You're here. And our goal is to keep everyone safe. Uh, I like going to Culver's too. Do it after church, not during church. Does everyone understand? Excellent. Okay, here's the fourth one. This is connected. If you have to leave early, your parents have to come into the building to pick you up. So uh, your parents drop you off. If you go up to a leader and say, hey, my mom is picking me up early, tell your mom or whoever it is that they have to come into the building so that we make sure that you get to the, to the right place. Because before 8.30, we are responsible for you. And so we don't want anything bad happening to you. And you say, oh, my mom's here, but then really it's just your boyfriend or your girlfriend picking you up or whatever it is. We want to avoid all that stuff. So until 8.30... We stay here. If you have to leave early, your parents come into the building. We've communicated that to your parents before, but now I'm communicating it to all of you. Does everyone understand? Excellent. Moving right along. Number five, all students have to be in their designated areas during service. Now, uh, this means that when you're here, you're here. And so there's no uh, special privilege of, well, I don't feel like being here, so I'm just going to sit in the lobby. No, that's not happening anymore. You guys will be here if you're here. Now, the next is connected to this. We do have some students that have sensory issues. Uh, you know, maybe you are really sensitive to loud noises or lights that are flashing. So if you have a sensory issue, we just need to talk to your parents, either to have them write a note or just talk to them on the phone or something so we know, hey, this person does have a medical reason for not being in the service. Does anyone understand? Excellent. Number seven, all students must attend their small groups. Oh, no, wrong order. No phones during group time. That's, this is, should be clear. We've talked about this before, but during the worship service, during the sermon, don't have your phone out. Uh, if you are trying to say, well, I've got the Bible app, we put the scripture up on the screen. Um, we will do the three strikes rule with this. Um, please don't make us have to act like at school. And in your group time, we're just trying to make this, you can do something like have leaders, y'all can have all the students like put their phones in the center so we're all listening to each other or whatever, however you wanna do it. Um, but we wanna make sure that we are all attentive and participating uh, and not distracting other people. Does everyone understand? Excellent. All right, number eight. All students must attend their small groups. And what I mean by their small groups is, if you are in a small group, you have to go to your small group, not somebody else's. So if you're in eighth grade or you're in seventh grade, but you wanna go to the senior class, well, guess what? You can't do that. You've gotta go to your group, not their group. So, uh, and the other thing is, if you are uh, here, you have to go to your group. And I've had some people say, I didn't know we had to go to our groups. Well, here is your formal declaration. You have to go to your small groups. <laughs> Unless your parents are picking you up early, you gotta go. Everyone understand? Excellent. Number nine, no bullying or fighting of any kind. And this I want to stress really strongly whether it's people are getting too intense, you know, if we, got, if we got some like middle schoolers that are getting way too intense about gaga ball and people are yelling and no, you're out, no, you're out. And then people start yelling at each other. No fighting. Get an adult. We'll take care of stuff. If someone is trying to pick on you, get an adult. We have a zero tolerance policy for any kind of bullying whatsoever. And um, this applies also to cyber or in person. So if there is someone in the ministry who is cyber bullying, get an adult right away because we are absolutely not okay with that whatsoever. Um, and here's the deal, you guys. Um, I, I know that some bullying can be unintentional. Maybe you're just making a joke and you're not thinking about how the words come across or whatever. But let me be very clear, just because you don't intend something doesn't mean that people aren't hurt by the words that you say. So um, 
we're going to be very clear about that. No bullying, zero tolerance whatsoever. So uh, if you are, you know, all playing Gaga Ball and you're getting way too intense or you're playing Super Smash Brothers and you start screaming or whatever or whatever it is, we are going to make sure that it is a safe place where no one's being picked on, no one's being bullied, there's no fighting. Does everybody understand? Excellent. Last one. If you have to leave for any reason whatsoever, ask a leader. This includes if you have to go to the bathroom, ask a leader. If you are feeling really emotional and overwhelmed because of worship or whatever it is, just talk to a leader before you step out. So this is something that we are instituting because we are going to be controlling how many people are doing in and out. Because what happens when people are constantly in and out, in and out, in and out, it's really distracting for everybody else. So we have until 6.45 when we will call everyone in here. So you have a chance to go use the bathroom. And then we will be uh, having people, uh, you know, when we dismiss for small groups, you can use the restroom. But if you have to go to the restroom, it's an emergency, you can't hold it, just talk to one of us. What we are trying to avoid, and I'll be very specific about this, we are trying to av avoid the instance of, I have to go to the bathroom, so I'm bringing all 12 of my best friends with me. <laughs> Y'all know how that goes. Or, it, yeah, no, no parties in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys. So, there is, there is just ask a leader. If, here's the other thing that we have encountered before. I need you all to pay attention on this. If you are feeling emotionally overwhelmed, or maybe you deal with anxiety or something, it's totally okay. We will let you step out and have some space so you can calm down. But as a professional who counsels people and works with people with anxiety, please let me assure you, you bringing all 12 of your best friends to huddle around you is not the thing that's going to make your anxiety better. It's going to make it worse. So if you need to step out, it's okay. Just don't try to bring everyone with you. We are trying to make sure that it is a safe and welcoming uh, and controlled learning environment for everybody so everyone can get something out of this. Does everyone understand? Excellent. You're not, uh, I kept saying 12. I don't know why, maybe the 12 disciples. <laughs> Look, you're not Jesus going to Jerusalem. You're just going to Tinkle, you know? So <laughs> don't do it. Okay. We've gone over all of these. If you have questions about that, you can come talk to us. Your leaders have a copy of all of these rules so they can also know everything is going on. So thank you for indulging me in going through this. Now let's talk about some fun stuff. So our, our mission... As a church, we are people helping people find and follow Christ. There it is. You can tell who comes on Sundays. Yes. Now, what does that mean? Pastor Bruce was preaching about this on Sunday. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. All authority on heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. Therefore, go and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded, and surely I will be with you even until the end of the age. So what that means is peop, the first people, we are all the people, and we are helping all other people who are not here or who are in this room, people of all nations, of all kinds, to find and to follow Christ. And I know that there are many of us who are looking for help with the core issues in our lives, and we talked about that. Guys, that this is a place where you can find help if you are struggling with any kind of sin, any type of emotional burden, a mental burden, whatever it is, this is a safe place for you. Now, how do we do this? Well, at a core level, you could say we're all about Jesus. Everyone say all about Jesus. All about Jesus. Yes, we are all about Jesus, and our entire goal is to help, is to experience him and to help other people experience him. And so to do that, we have five things that we value. The first is that we are all welcome. That means we are people of grace. 
It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, where you come from. This is your home. And this is a welcoming place for everybody. Now, the second one is that we are all real, which means we are authentic. So when we uh, are in our sermon time, we will talk about real life issues that you deal with and we'll be transparent about them. We're not gonna shy away from the nitty gritty because we know you guys are living in the nitty gritty every single day. And so in small group time, that is your place to openly share about what you're struggling with, what you're going through in a place where you're not gonna be judged by anybody, but you're gonna find love and acceptance. Now, the other thing is that we are all Bible. We are all Bible. There is a scripture verse, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 through 17. All scripture, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. So what we believe and teach all comes directly from the Bible. And we believe that the Bible is 100% true in everything that it affirms. And so we're going to teach the Bible each week. Fourth value, we are all in means we hold nothing back. We are all in on this ministry. So your leaders, they are all in for you. They are here for you. They want to support you. They want to love you through whatever you're going through. And if you are struggling with something, we are available to you. Guys, I've taken phone calls at like one in the morning from people who are struggling. Guys, seriously, if you are struggling, we are here for you and we are all in for it. And so we want all of us, not just the leaders, but all of the leaders and our students to be all in for Jesus. Now, the last value is that we are all together, which means we are unified to make a difference. We are unified, we are one team, one family, accomplishing our one mission, people helping people find and follow Christ. Now, lastly, we're gonna put these up on the screen as well. We have four ways to do that, that we want all of y'all participating in all four of these things. The first one is engaging God individually. Engaging God individually, we want to help all of you guys learn what it means to meet with God one-on-one. Because you can't just show up to church on Sundays and Wednesdays and expect for that to be what gets you by spiritually. We want to empower all of you to meet with God, to study his word, to pray, to grow on your own, so that when you come here, you're getting even more out of it. And middle schoolers, by the way, with our middle school program on Sunday mornings, we have just launched a devotional guide that connects to our Sunday morning program. So middle schoolers, if you guys are looking for a a core resource to help, hey, I wanna read my Bible, I don't know how, guess what? We have been sending your parents an email every week that has a guide that you guys can follow for your own personal devotional time. And uh, I'm really excited that we're launching that. Now, the second one is connecting in a group. And we are about to go do this in just a few moments. We are all about the small group. Guys, if you take away the worship, If you take away the sermon, if you take away the games and the pizza and the fun and all that stuff, you take all of it away. The core of our ministry is the small group. What happens in small group is the most important thing. And so we want all of you guys to be connecting in your small groups on Wednesday night. The third thing, worship in a gathering. We are doing that right now. We just sang a bunch of worship songs. Uh, We have a sermon where we open up God's word together as one group. Um, And so we take it seriously when uh, there's people who are being disruptive or a distraction or whatever, because we really want to emphasize how important it is when we all come together There's something spiritually significant when we all come together as one and worship God. And the last thing is that we impact others personally, that we are not just growing, but that we are taking Christ into our schools, into our workplaces, to our friends, wherever it is, to our sports teams. And our natural response of knowing Jesus is to share about Jesus with other people. So really quick, before we go to our small groups, 
what's next? I want to cue where we're going, and I've put together our Marvel Cinematic Universe style timeline so you can see for the fall. Yeah, I kind of feel like Kevin Feige at like uh, Comic-Con or something. So on this, you will see a huge announcement. Effective next week, we are splitting for teaching between middle school and high school every week. So... How that's going to look is after the worship time, we will split between middle school and high school. So middle schoolers, you guys are going to go upstairs to the treehouse most Wednesday nights after worship. Now we'll dismiss everyone together and you'll go up there for the teaching. And high schoolers, y'all will stay here and have the teaching here in Worship East. Now, that's our major, major update. So our theme, of, we actually have a theme of the year. This is where we're going. Our theme of the year is that we are in the world, but not of the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. And so uh, Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And so what we are gonna be doing, just like Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. And he said, my followers, you guys, all of us, we are not of this world because Jesus is not of this world, but we are in the world. So what does that look like? And that's gonna be our theme for the year. And so as you look at this timeline, we just launched, we're gonna have in a couple of weeks, our four week apologetic series. We're gonna be answering questions like, how can you believe that there's a God who created the, the universe? How can you believe in Jesus above all the other religions? How can you know that the Bible is true? These are really core questions that all of us have to ask at some point. We're gonna go through a series talking called Seven, talking about the seven churches in the book of Revelation. We're gonna, over uh, October, we're gonna have two weeks where we have the Twilight Zone. Do, 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 do. Where we're actually gonna show some Twilight Zone and learn from the episodes, yeah. And then you can see in the spring, cue the next timeline, we are going to launch on January 11th. We're going to, high schoolers, we're bringing back PG-13 Sunday School for you guys. And middle schoolers, y'all have a separate series for that. And we're going to be looking at the book of Daniel for a lot of it in February, February 17th. D now, 2023 is coming up. And then right after D now, we come back from spring break and we are bringing back monsters. Last year, we did an art project, and guys, let me tell y'all, we have animation planned for this year. We, yeah, it's going to be really cool. And then at the end of the year, the last week of school, our end of the year party, Neon Night returns. EDM music, dubstep music, dancing, neon, black lights, glow sticks, all of it. It's going to be a blast. So guys, let me just say, we've got a lot coming ahead for this year. So for now, we're going to go to our small groups, and I'm going to pray just a second. Y'all are already getting ready. <laughs> I want to pray for us real quick, and then I will give you instructions of where to go because our small group rooms, shh. Our small group rooms have changed. You don't know where you're going. <laughs> you will be lost. <laughs> so let me pray, and then I will explain what's going on. Let's all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for bringing all these amazing students here. God, we thank you in, in, in expectation for what you're going to do this year through this ministry at CF Students. So bless our time in small groups, and it's in Jesus' name, amen.